Well, everyone, you might remember just last year in the laptop market, AMD committed. They committed to using their current CPU naming scheme at least through 2025. Well, here we are, not too long later, and it's the generation of AI everything. So you can take all of the plans, rip them up, and I guess welcome your new AI overlords because the new CPUs from AMD for the laptop market will be called the Ryzen AI 300 series. Cut right here. We're gonna do control F in my notes to see how many times I said AI. 26, 26 times in my notes. And look, I know you're saying it, yes, AI, it's in everything, it's the catchphrase for everything. But I have to say that after the 8000 series, which we were very disappointed with, this new 300 series, it has it all. It has Zen 5, so a brand new CPU architecture, RDNA 3.5, and a bunch of other things. Now, I've already said so many times that 2023 and part of this year, 2024, they were just so boring in the laptop market. But the rest of this year, into 2025, it's gonna be banging. Basically, these new Ryzen processors will be targeting everything from ultra slim and light laptops like the upcoming ZenBook 14 refreshes to mid-tier gaming devices like the Tough A14 and A16. They'll even be used in higher end laptops like the ROG Zephyrus G16. Let's just say this is a super versatile architecture. Okay, so what's up with this name? Why are we going from four digits, the three digits and the AI part? Well, the AI part is probably self-evident, right? Somebody in a boardroom at AMD said, we need more AI. Every single time we say AI in our presentations or have it on our product, our stock goes up by a penny. So guess what? Here comes Ryzen AI. It's not good enough anymore to have it as a little sticker on your laptop. You need to have it in the name. Okay, great. Then somebody said, look, this four digit naming scheme, it's not all that great either. What we should do is we should simplify it like Intel did, have three digits, all right? Great, well, the 100 series is Meteor Lake. The 200 series is gonna be the upcoming Lunar Lake, so we need a bigger number. Let's do the 300 series. So I give you the Ryzen AI 300 series. Meeting adjourned, done. But seriously, AMD has an opportunity here. Instead of needing a freaking product decoder to find whether your laptop CPU is based on a current generation design or one that's years old, this allows for a clean break between the mess of previous Zen designs and this new Zen 5 microarchitecture. So let's decode what they're trying to do here. Of course, there's the Ryzen AI branding, which is then followed by the processor's brand level. And that's the part that gets the biggest change. There's still the normal numbering from three to nine with the higher number denoting a higher end chip, but what you won't see anymore is a letter attached to the end of each product number. Instead, HX will denote the top level chip in each series, whereas the others won't get any additional letters at all. And look, while this does technically simplify things, there's still a ton of room for end user confusion here. I know I said this could allow for a clean break between Zen 5 and previous generations, but you have to remember there's nothing stopping AMD from rebranding the 7040 or 8040 models here since both of those were technically AI enabled CPUs too. Anyways, AMD, look at me, look at me. Right now, you have a chance. Don't rebrand old processors again. Don't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm begging you here because you have a chance to do it right. But you know what also does it right? This case from Montec. When elegance meets value, Montec Sky 2 GX cases ensures your components can breathe properly with its innovative mesh front panel design that's easy to access. The included premium AX 140 ARGB fans provide a sleek aesthetic boost, expand to EATX, load up to 11 fans, enjoy vertical GP mounting, and level up your cooling game with support for up to 360 millimeter radiators, and stay connected with a plethora of USB ports, including a fast USB-C port. The elegant airflow focus case has evolved. Check out the new Sky 2 GX down below. Anyways, with that out of the way, we need to have a little bit more of a discussion about Zen 5, because in many ways, this is a fundamental shift away from what they used to be doing with Zen 4 and previous generations of the Zen architecture. Now, we don't know everything there is to know about Zen 5. That's simply because AMD is keeping their like secret sauce close to their chests until launch becomes, I guess, a, a little bit closer. And that's gonna happen in a couple of weeks to a couple of months, depending on which processors there are here. Now, this fundamental shift for Zen 5, you might think 
in some ways, because AMD is using two type of cores in this new microarchitecture, that they're doing the same thing that Intel and Apple and to a lesser extent Qualcomm has been doing with performance and efficiency cores. But the discussion is a lot more nuanced than that. Basically, these Ryzen AI CPUs are using a mix of standard Zen 5 and smaller Zen 5C cores. And no, those Zen 5C cores aren't what you'd consider efficiency cores or E cores on other architectures at all. In many ways, they're simply a miniaturized version of a standard Zen 5 core with a few minor changes. We actually already saw this when the updated Ryzen 7000 U series launched since it also used a combination of cores. Those two chips were actually used as AMD's testing platform for a parallelized implementation of Zen and Zen C within the laptop market. And while AMD hasn't disclosed all the details about Zen 5C, we can be reasonably certain its goals will remain the same as Zen 4C. And that's to increase performance density and deliver overall better efficiency. With the 4C layout, there was an approximate 35% reduction in size despite using the exact same TSMC 5 nanometer manufacturing process. And while there's no confirmation about this yet, Zen 5C could be using an even more advanced 3 nanometer process. Meanwhile, from a technical comparison perspective, the standard and C-series cores were very similar to Zen 4, right down to their IPC rates. And that's important since AMD can neatly avoid complicated software-heavy scheduling tasks within Windows like what Intel's Thread Director deals with. There were a few minor differences though. For example, while standard Zen cores have a higher absolute clock limit, which gives them better scalability at higher wattages, C-series cores excel in lower TDP scenarios. So combining both sort of gives the Ryzen 300 series the best of both worlds. Another thing this dual core type approach allows is for AMD to scale their mobile processor quite easily by using a constant foundation of four Zen 5 cores and then adding or removing 5C cores as needed. And this is actually the biggest benefit of using 5C. Those small cores, they also support SMT. So finally, finally, we're gonna see low power AMD CPUs for thin and light laptops move beyond eight cores and 16 threads. So these new Ryzen 300 series are actually gonna top out at 12 cores and 24 threads. And, and that for thin and light laptops is a huge step in the right direction, especially when it comes to creativity focused tasks. Now, the other part of this architecture is RDNA 3.5. And I know what you're saying, where is RDNA 4? But if you look at the cadence that AMD has had in their graphics, the discrete GPUs come out first, integrated second, and right now, who knows when those RDNA 4 discrete cards are coming out. So we're going to get RDNA 3.5 on these new CPUs, and that's probably gonna stick around for at least a generation or two. Unfortunately, there's not much we actually know about RDNA 3.5 just yet, other than the fact that Ryzen AI processors will have up to 16 compute units, which is a pretty big increase from the 780M's 12CU layout. AMD hasn't talked about anything else, but I'd expect there to be a lot more information coming down the pipeline. Of course, there's also some major updates on the local AI processing side with AMD's second generation XDNA 2 NPU. And this thing, well, it's expected to push performance and efficiency to the next level and offer up to 15 8-bit tera operations per second, which should technically put it above many other designs. Are you ready to go? No, I mean like leave for breakfast. All right, so we have the CPU cores, we've got a revised GPU, and we've got a brand new NPU architecture. With all those three things combined, what do these new processors actually look like? Well, there's the 12 core 24 thread Ryzen AI 9 HX 370. Oh my God, what a mouthful. And, and then there's the 20 thread Ryzen AI 9 365. Both use the same primary block of four Zen 5C cores, and that's augmented by either six or eight Zen 5C cores. But where are all the other processors? I mean, there's just like two now. Usually we get a massive lineup of H, HX, U, and countless other permutations within each of those series, but not this time. Instead, there's just two for now. You see, since these can be dynamically tuned by laptop manufacturers to deliver from 15 watts all the way up to 54 watts, they can be used in a bunch of different applications from gaming laptops to ultralight convertible tablets. I mean, sure, there's gonna be a Ryzen 5, 3, and 7 series rolled out too at some point, but those will only offer lower core counts. According to AMD, this move cuts down on naming confusion, but it also means there's no way to know which performance class your processor ultimately falls into. 
and wattage means everything for laptop CPU performance. With the previous generation letter-based approach, at least we could broadly know what to expect. Now something like the HX370 could be blazingly fast or terribly slow. You have no way to know unless manufacturers commit to adding wattages to their specifications. And what does this all mean for comparative performance? And typically, I don't really like showing internal numbers that AMD shows to us because they're always biased in some way. And the same thing goes for Intel and I'm sure Qualcomm too with their upcoming Snapdragon X Elite. But I mean, we have to have some perspective here. Where do things lie even if it's on a positive perspective? But you also have to take what I'm about to show you with a grain of salt because right now, AMD can only compare these processors to the theoretical performance of what Qualcomm has coming and also what Intel has coming because Intel, their Meteor Lake is being replaced by Lunar Lake almost in the same time frame that these Strix Point processors are coming out from AMD. So at least against Meteor Lake, AMD seems to have a pretty significant edge, at least based on their own internal numbers. And look, this is pretty good news since Meteor Lake was eating the Ryzen 8000 series lunch since that series was nothing more than a rebrand. AMD is also betting big against the Apple M3 in a bunch of critical applications with the HX370 running at its maximum 54 watt spec while the M3 is installed at least in these benchmarks, into a MacBook Pro 14 inch. Gaming though, that has always been one of AMD's strengths, especially when it comes to drivers on the integrated side. And that won't change this time, considering the 790M GPU core gets a pretty significant bump in CUs over the previous generation. The only wild card here is where Intel's gonna be with their Lunar Lake XE2 GPU, which is supposed to get up to 50% better performance than the integrated graphics in Meteor Lake. Or they might fall a little bit short though, that's in the drivers again. So that pretty much wraps up everything that you need to know right now about the Strix Points or AMD Ryzen AI, AI 300 series CPUs. You're probably also wondering, when are these things gonna launch? Well, actually, this is gonna be a very gradual rollout throughout the rest of this year into 2025. We're gonna see the first laptops that have these processors sometime in like July and August with a bunch of other laptops coming out throughout the year. Unfortunately though, what we can't really say right now is where everything's gonna line up against the competition because this year, the competition is gonna be absolutely incredible. You're gonna have Lunar Lake, you're gonna have Qualcomm, Qualcomm. What you're gonna have is you're gonna have Lunar Lake, you're gonna have Qualcomm's X Elite and X Plus CPUs, and you're probably also gonna have Apple's M4. So where everything lines up, who knows? But at this point in time, it makes for a very, very interesting 2024 and 2025. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it clarified some things about AMD's upcoming lineup, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.